Now to our major discussion for tonight, everyone. Get it set. We are going to Kogi State. Today, the governor of Kogi State, Mr. Yaya Bello, declared his intention to run for a second term in office on the platform of the EPC. He said he wants a second term uh, at uh, a program at the inauguration of the board of the State House of Assembly Service Commission at the banquet hall of the government house in Lokoja. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, had announced that the governorship election in the state will hold on the 2nd of November 2019. But has the Yaya Bello government delivered on its promises to the people of the state? Does he deserve a second time? If I will he get the ticket of the party? Let's get some perspectives to this matter and uh, perhaps an interesting election it promises to be. Joining me here in the studio is uh, Governor Yaya Bello's uh, advisor on media, Mr. Kingsley Fangwo. And uh, from our Abuja studio is a member of the House of Representatives from Kogi State, a member of the PDP, Honorable Sunday Karimi. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming tonight to talk about these issues in Kogi State. Let me begin with you. Um, your governor declared his interest. Uh, perhaps, is it not too early, based on the calendar that INEC has set? And uh, the big question will be, will he even get a ticket to run on the platform of the APC? Thank you very much. Uh, it's not too early for him to, <coughs> to inform members of his cabinet that uh, he'll be gone in for a second time in office. Um, having justified the mandate given to him uh, for this first term, so far, uh, he is entitled to uh, declare his intention to contest. It is now that we are going to go to Drobo to drop the plans and the agenda for the campaigns. Mm. So uh, the big question is, will he get the ticket of the party? The decision of uh, who gets the ticket of the party resides in the executives of the party who will decide in a free and fair primaries uh, to decide who is going to have the ticket of the party. And um, being a leader who has led the party to strings of successes in the 2019 general elections, it will be very difficult for anybody to stop a moving train like a higher building. Mm, has he been successful? I mean, has he, yeah, you said string of successes. Yeah. Uh, you lost a uh, senatorial seat. You lost uh, a, a few uh, uh, legislative seats also. Yeah, you, you, base, uh, you base performances on percentages. You have just said that uh, you, you're, you're accruing uh, political successes to yeah. your principal. Yeah. And I'm saying... Uh, success is in an election is when you win, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So if you have lost in some seat, how would you say it's successful? Okay, this is how you measure success here. Yeah. The presidential election, he delivered to the party. Three senatorial seats, he delivered two. Nine House of Rep seats, he delivered seven. Twenty-five House of Assembly seats, he delivered all the twenty-five. That's a huge success on his part. And the first in the history of the state. So it is unprecedented. In this sense... He has performed excellently. Mm. That's politically speaking. Uh, for some of his critics who believe that in governance, he has failed. What would you have to say? Yes, uh, it depends on who is um, rating, who is judging him. Uh, because as far as we are concerned, we came into governance with a blueprint. Why we're doing the election hearing, why we're talking to the delegates who we decide who will fly uh, the party's flag in 2015. We went round the entire 21 local government areas with the chief strategist of the campaign, uh, who then was uh, Chief Edward Onoja, the president chief of uh, staff to, to the governor. And we drew up our plans that we built into what we call the New Direction uh, Blueprint. We are executing that blueprint. And um, I I'll give you some of the pillars that uh, are there in the blueprint. One, he said he was going to unite the state. Before now, the state was balkanized along ethnic lines, along class lines, and all sorts of things like that. If you are from a particular part of the state, you are not entitled to certain positions and all of that. But when he came, he is the first governor who we have a chief of staff that is not from a senatorial district. Not only that, he spread all his appointments and projects across the three senatorial districts. Talking about today, projects, today, talking about projects. Yeah. And some of your opponents will say that in almost four years, your governor has not uh, even invited the president or the vice president or leaders of any party uh, to commission any project, finished projects in Kogi State. The time to invite these people to commission projects uh, remains the prerogative of the state government. Have you even finished it any projects? Yeah. We Has finished, it finished projects? We finished quite a number of projects that we have not invited them to come and commission 
shows that this man is a silent achiever that is doing his work quietly without the without so much noise. All right. We know that there are we know that there are there are very big projects that will require these people to come. Some of them are 95 percent completed as we speak and would we'll bring them to come and commission the project. Let, let, let's bring in Honorable Sunday Karimi. Uh, perhaps he may agree, he may not agree. Let's hear his views. Uh, Honorable Sunday Karimi, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, in the first place, uh, Mr. Fanwo, is there a chance for the PDP? In Fugu State? Yeah. I think the last election has uh, shown uh, whether they have a chance or not. I'm not going to sit here and um, pass judgment on them. But the people of Kogi State in the 2019 general elections have passed the judgment already. Okay. Hon Honorable Karimi, let me allow you to quickly just react. Uh, uh, he did say 2019 election was a judgment on your party. Uh, and he did say that your governor is a silent achiever. Those are the words of Mr. Fanwo. Your reactions? Okay. Um, thank you, Shio. In the first place, what took place in Kogi State in the name of uh, election? I mean, the last general election was a sham. What Yayabelo did was to unleash terror on the people. And let me tell you what happened in the name of election. They employed thugs all over the places, brought in armed thugs in police and army uniform, shot at people, shot sporadically, stole ballot buses away, in connivance with INEC officers, and they declare resort. But we are waiting for them in this governorship election. And we have told our people to prepare. Whatsoever it will take us to have a free, transparent election in Kogi State, that has to be done. What Jayabelo has been doing in Kogi in the last three years was nothing but a shame in the name of governance. What they have been doing in Kogi is looting, looting, and looting without anything to, to show for it. Let them name the project that they have done in the last three years. No project, nothing. They have run the, the state into bankrupt. In fact, as I'm talking to you, the state is owing over 100 billion naira without, uh, without anything to show for, for it. Salaries of workers are not paid. In fact, our state workers, they have lost count of what they have been told. Workers that are... That are supposed to enjoy 150,000 naira a month salary, they will see a lot of 12,000 in the name of payment. And you dare not ask, why are you receiving such? They have no project to show for their three years plus governance. Let them name the project. What they have been doing in the state in the name of governance is to terrorize the people and to loot, loot and cut our resources away. We are going to bring them to account for that. What happened in the name of election, especially the last election where they said they won 25 House of Assembly seat? Go, let them check with the security. What? They stole away ballot buses in the name of election? This, I'm talking of in, in this century that we, that we have. Honorable Karimi, let me pause it for a moment because we need Not to go for our sure. break. Uh, when we come back, I will be asking you a few questions and I'll allow Mr. Uh, Fanwo also to react to it. We're looking at Kogi State, one of the states that will be having elections on the 2nd of November. What has happened? How do you assess uh, Governor Yaya Belu? Those are the conversations we're having tonight. But we continue after this break, everyone. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's just get back to the conversation. Mr. Kingsley Fanwo is a spokesperson to the government of Yaya Belo in Kogi State. And Honorable uh, Sunday Karimi is a member of the House of Representatives representing Kogi State uh, in the lower chamber and uh, is a member of the PDP. We've been talking about the situation in Kogi State when the governor says he wants a second term. So does he deserve, based on uh, some of the promises that is made to his people, what are the situation on the ground? Those are the issues uh, that get our attention tonight on the program. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for, for your time. Quickly, I'll I come back to you. Um, uh, from the camp of um, uh, the governor, uh, one of the things that they've said quite often is the fact that the reason why the opposition is not happy and a lot of people who are, not, who are angry with Yaya Bello is because he's not allowed the usual chop-I-chop chop kind of situation that 
always happen in Kogi politics. And that's why uh, the kind of opposition against him is right. Is that true? Um, okay, so let me, let me just say something. What, what has been happening in Kogi State in the last three years is a situation where somebody just came into governance by luck because Kogi people didn't vote for him in the first place. And he came in a young man and he's been unleashing terror on the people and cutting away our resources. Nobody's well, ready to share you, Honorable, with Honorable, could, could, you, could, you give, could you give some specific... Honorable, could you give some specific... When, when you say uh, it cut away resources, what do you mean? If you say... Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me be what specific now. By the time it came into government, it, it, it got this... Uh, worry, gave them... Uh, this waiver that... They give them fund to at least pay what is being owed to workers. It took bailout of over 20 billion or 30 billion put together. Today, what has he paid to Kogi workers out of this 30 billion? Our workers are still being owed salary, and as of today, he's still asking for a loan of 30 billion from the government. Let let him show us what he has used the 30 million he took earlier for. And he has taken a series of loans from banks. There is no infrastructural development going on anywhere in Kogi State. I can tell you that. What they've been doing in the last three years is looting, looting, and looting of Kogi resources. And by the grace of God, they are going to pay for it. Our people, we, we check them out of government, right. and they will be made to account um, for their stewardship. Let, Honorable, the let me allow uh, Mr. Fango to react to some of the things that you have said. Some of the uh, reports that we have is that the governor has had almost 30 billion since uh, January 2018 up to now. He's borrowed about 30 billion from commercial banks in Nigeria. He's had about 50 billion as bailout funds, two bailout funds, two pirate funds from the federal government. And if you see workers who are protesting in Kogi State, they are being owed several months of salary. How would you react to it? Why are some of these workers still being owed salaries? Yeah, I, I'm going to, you know, um, Honorable Sunday Karimi is, um, is trained to, to do boreholes. I am trained to talk. So I will finish this in three minutes. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. I respect no. the position. I respect the position of um, Honorable Sunday Karimi as the House of Representative member representing my constituency. If uh, he does not respect the position of the governor of his state, uh, that is left to him. But I respect his position. So I'm not, I am not going to directly call him a liar, but I will sell the record straight and allow the people to judge. The elections, why are they turning illogic on the head? Why are they turning logic on the head? Why are they so illogical? The first election, Senator Dino Milai was declared winner. Honorable Leke Abejide was declared winner for Yagwa Federal Constituency. Honorable T.J. Yusuf was declared winner for Kababunui Jumu Federal Constituency. These elections, there was, there was no violence at all because these people won, isn't it? Now that APC has won, it is now violence. This is, these are things that they cannot really string together. You know, when losers are frustrated, a lot of things uh, would, would come out of it. The elections were free and fair. And when you talk about impunity, in Kogi State, PDP is the father of impunity. This same Honorable Sunday Karimi wanted to go to the Senate. He was robbed of the ticket. He protested. He wrote to the panel and did all sorts of things, but he, did, he could not get the ticket. Can we, that, see, can we see on the issue of the salaries? Yeah. Because that no, concerns no, no, a lot wait, of wait. the people I of Kogi going State. To, I'm going see to. The, no. Why is the Please. government of Kogi State uh, owing let, salaries let me, let me, despite those funds that are available to I will you? Finish, I will finish this thing in two minutes. Projects. His, his constituency that is representing, there is a rice mill there that this state government is doing there. That rice mill is the second largest in northern Nigeria. It is just about 30 minutes drive from his community. So when he's saying that there is no project at all, 
I will be so surprised because these projects are there for everyone what to see. What about the dairy factory that the governor, governor promised? In he said it's going to be the Holland of Africa. In his, wait. As, in as, as, as Nigeria started also, getting milk out of Kogi State. Also in his community. No, no, no. Answer to that. You said. The governor promised that Kogi State will be the Holland of Africa. Yes. And that people will get milk from uh, at that your summit. As Nigerians started getting milk from Kogi State. It is a project that was supposed to be co-owned by the federal government, private investors, and the state government. So it is not a state government project so entirely. The milk has not started flowing. It has not started flowing. So these are the projects, even in this constituency. Salaries. Let's go to the salaries. I, no, no, I'm, I'm coming. On the issue of um, um, we came into gov governance by error, that, that's, that's, a very, that's a very expensive one. We campaigned around the entire state. He came second to Prince Abubakar Audu. He was instrumental to the victory of Buhari in 2015 through the Kogi Youth Arise Group. So he didn't come into governance by error. On the, on the issue of salaries, the party that, said, uh, that the Honorable Sunday Karim is represented caused most of the problems we faced. They took what they called bond and they were expending it on white elephant projects. This same Honorable Sunday Karimi, one of his constituency projects in Sitcom College did not go beyond the foundation level and he has collected the money. They want to come to a I, excuse with me, excuse hands. me, excuse so, me. So, the bailout is talking me. about we did not collect 30 billion. Oh, that God. is another lie. We took 20 billion. Those who assessed what we needed to pay all our salaries and pensions projected 50.8 billion, mm. which was approved by Mr. President. From the 50.8 billion, we, had, we have assessed only 20 billion, remaining 30.8 so billion. So that's the reason why you're still owing salary. That's the reason why we are still owing salary. Because you're out of time, I'll give you 10 seconds, Honorable Karimi, to reply. Just 10 seconds, please, in one breath. We are out of time. In the, for, in the first place, House of Rest member, National Assembly member, they don't receive a constituency project money. Those projects are awarded by agencies of government. I have no project in TITCOM in my name. All right. The project that is talking about. So, if that's your final word, then, then we need to Sorry, close. But I'd science. like you to close. Federal Minister of Science and Tech, and the project is going on. What they have been doing in Kogi, as I've said, is looting. Looting and right. looting. We, we, we need to close. And on this note, let me a lot of uh, talks in your party, in 10 seconds reply to this, okay. that your leader in the APC, Bola Tinobu, is not happy with your governor, your principal. Is your principal is in, is in trouble? Alhaji Ayabelo was well, brought, was well brought up by his parents. He respects elders. Um, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinobu is the national leader of our party, respected so much by the governor. He sees Ashiwaju right. as his leader, and Ashiwaju also respects him right. as the governor of Kogi State and the first political there. son of President Muhammad Buhari. We have to leave Thank it there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Akinsley Fanwo, for your time on the program. He speaks for the governor of Kogi State, and Honorable Sunday Karimi, a member of the PDP in the House of Representatives representing Kogiste. Thank you so much for coming on today, gentlemen. Well, that's how we'll leave it, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shawakimale. Bye-bye.